So what's up everybody, Holy Walkers here, welcome to the video to your doorstep. Guys, it is I, Todd, and I am coming to you like right on my prayer, right on my Bible time. Um, it's like eight in the morning, I think, but I've been up. You typically have to stay up at night and pray now, like, um, you know, I work in the daytime, do whatever me and Heather are doing, and then when I get home, like, I just go to God. And, uh, and God is, uh, he is just constantly working on me. He's constantly trying to change me and make me who he wants me to be. You know, as a Christian, I've failed, I've fallen, I've faltered, I've made mistakes, I've, you know, walked away from God, I've walked really close with God. And, um, you know, one of the things God's really been speaking to my heart is just about being more committed to him and uh, even greater than I've ever been committed to him before. And I see that happening with a lot of people. I see a lot of people uh, just talking about how God is talking to them and God is calling them closer to him in our walk with Christ and our relationship with him. And, um, you know, it's like, this is, like I said, I just came out of my prayer time. I'm still kind of in my prayer time, to be honest with you. And just, I had some really profound thoughts that I was like, while I was sitting here just praying and I was thinking, I was listening to something that, uh, I just had this profound thought and. I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted to share these thoughts with you. I wanted to share my heart with you and uh, let it resonate with you because I feel that God, just if he's speaking to me and he's He's revealing something to me that I want to reveal that to you as well. And, um, you know, that's I'm probably going to make more videos like this. I'm going to make more videos just sharing what God's laying on my heart because I want you guys to have the same opportunity to... You know, if you are believers and if you believe in Christ and you're walking with him, then I want you to have like anything extra to help you get there. And if you're not a believer, I want you to realize that the relationship that we have with our creator, with our savior, you know, there's no God on this earth. Um, no true God. You know, they say there's idols. They say there's things that have been made by man, um, whether created uh, in the image of our God, or they've been created, right? They, they've been thought up. They've been built off the concept of the real true God. Uh, they've been designed. Sometimes they are actually are carved images and things like that, but they've all been created. The sad thing is we worship a lot of things in this world. We worship people. We worship places. We worship um, our husbands, our wives, our family, money, greed, power. We worship a lot of things, right? But God taught us to only worship the one true God and to only worship him. And uh, I think we've all been guilty in our lives of worshiping other things in our lives at time. And so while that's something I'm telling you right now, that's not the reason what I wanted to share with you. But I want you to think about that because that is, and as I shared in my last video, that is really truly what I feel that God is reminding us that we can't, we can't serve two masters. We can't be in love with the world and be in love with our God. We have to, you know, be in love with him and him alone. And uh, that may sound harder, that may sound hard, it may sound easy, it may sound difficult. I, I don't know, it depends on where you are in your life and what you've chosen to follow, what you've chosen to, f to love and, and go after and where your passions lie. And uh, that doesn't mean you can't have passions and things, it just means, you know, but, but there's a, but without God, you know, there's just like a vacuum inside of us. Like we need him in our lives. Like, and that's the whole act of sin entering the world and uh, was that it separated us from God. And when Christ died for us, he, he brought us back into relationship with God and uh, fulfilled, <laughs> fulfilled like a beautiful thing that, that God had worked to do and worked through man to find a way to bring us back to the original creation. And he has such things planned for us in the future. But I wanted to share something that was on my heart tonight. And it's about my walk with God. And it's, it's, I began to think about like, you know, one of the biggest things Jesus like told the disciples when he was here on earth is he said he would just literally be like teaching or doing something and the disciples would be there and they'd be, be talking to them or they'd ask him a question. And he would basically just be like, hey, follow me. Hey, you follow me. And, uh, you know, that not that what he's asked all of us to do, right? To follow him. And uh, he's calling out to the entire world, right? Like, follow me, follow me, follow me. And he wants that none would not know 
this relationship that we can have with our Creator uh, that's so personal and intimate and the, it's it's just an amazing, beautiful thing, right? And He wants everyone to have that opportunity. And so, I mean, I just hear that echo like right now in my spirit. He's just saying, follow me, follow me, follow me, right? Because this world will pass away, you know, it's going to be destroyed. The, there's a life to everything and, and the earth has a life that's that's coming to an end at some time and but God's got a different plan he's got a bigger plan beyond this right and uh but if we're not following him you know we don't just gonna go along for the ride like he wants relationship with us and if we haven't chosen a relationship and you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus tells us that no one will come to the Father except through him and it's only through our faith and belief in Christ that we'll have we are brought back into that relationship with God. Um, and they said that the, you know, the path is narrow, like that many people won't see it. Their eyes will be blinded, their ears will be deaf. They'll be under to hear and see what, what God's trying to show them. But this is what I was thinking about. Um, thinking about what does that mean to follow God, to follow Jesus, right? And uh, for those of us who have accepted Jesus as our savior, uh, you know, we walk with him, we, we talk with him, you know, with, with God and, and we, we talk with Jesus and we come to him when we have troubles and we, we're there. But I think a lot of times, and you, you saw this in the Bible, like I've been reading a lot of, of the prophets and Isaiah and different things. I believe a lot of the prophecy books in the Bible. And you saw where God, there's this one scripture and I, and I, I, I'll find it for you. I'll put it in the description or something, but there's a scripture in the Bible where God's saying how you bring all your sins before me. Um, he's basically saying how the how Israel was bringing and sacrificing for sin and bringing sacrifices to for sin and bringing the sins before God and He was forgiving them. But He was He was missing that relationship with them. There wasn't any Thanksgiving offerings to thank Him, or it was always because they had sinned and they were coming to ask Him to forgive them. And see, when Christ died on the cross for us and he shed his blood on Calvary, he was the last sacrifice that would ever need to be done for our lives. And he redeemed us with the Lord, right? And he paid that price. He took the place of us. We were, you know, we got the world. The Bible says that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we've all sinned, right? We all would be punished by death um, for all time, right? And, uh, but when Jesus died for us, he, he redeemed us in that and he took the place of us for our sins, right? Like everything you may have ever done wrong um, in your life, anything you've done, you know, that was not honorable and not honorable to God and not honorable maybe to yourself. Um, he died for us, right? For all those things. Any darkness that's within us, any sin that's within us, like Jesus took our place. Like it was basically our, we were going to be penalized and, and suffer but he came in and took it right and that's an amazing beautiful thing in itself that he took our place by getting on the cross and dying for us and when he did it he didn't just do it for himself but he said that he was man and he was he was god too but he when he lived when he lived on earth he was tempted just like all of us are to sin to fall into sexual morality or or whatever it may be whatever sin you may have hatred murder jealousy covetousness um all these things, right? And uh, worshiping other gods, right? And again, like I said earlier, I think we've all been guilty of it in some way, form in our lives. And uh, I apologize because this isn't written out. I'm just talking from my heart right now. So I'm going to edit this together the best I can. But um, there's a point I want to get to, and I hope you'll stay with me here. So God told us a couple of things, which are when Jesus was on the earth and he was teaching the disciples. There's a few things he mentioned, things like, and one of the biggest things was he would say, come follow me. You know, there was actually like people that would come to him and be like, how can I have the powers that you have? How can I, you know, have this relationship? And he would be like, you have to give up everything you own. You you have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, um, all that you have and to follow me, right? And he would, there were all kinds of different situations, but they always involve like us being willing to give up our own lives, right? The reason why that is, is because we have selfish desires, right? Like in this world, we are more concerned about what we want, how we want it, what we want, how we're going to get it. Um, it's in within all of us, right? We, we have goals, whether it's to feed our family, to take care of them, to provide for them. Um, I mean, those are things that we all need to do, but it's like whatever our aspirations are. And sometimes we forget to involve God in that, you know? And what God was calling us to do was to 
to Jesus was saying, like, don't focus on that. You know, focus on the kingdom because the hour is at hand. Even Jesus was prophesying of the end times. He was telling us to stop focusing on, you know, the things of this world. Stop focusing on this, on, on your, your own things, right? You've got to be willing to sacrifice all of that. Your relationships, your family, um, everything for the kingdom of God. And what he meant was we had to put that first, right? We had to, our focus should be how do we tell others about Christ and how do we spread the gospel of Christ? Like that should be our first and foremost focus, right? For the day we wake up till we go to bed, everything we do should embody that. And we don't spend time with our family and things like that. No, that's not what I'm saying. But everything we do, we should be following Jesus, right? We should be taking him with us in our relationship. And that's one of the things about Jesus and his disciples in the Bible. And if you haven't read the New Testament of the Bible, some people haven't, you know, read it. Um, read it. You know, you can read Isaiah 53 and it speaks of the coming Messiah. Then you can read the New Testament and you'll see how he fulfilled the prophecies of the Messiah. But it takes you through a journey where Jesus took these disciples along with him as he was doing his ministry before he was, before he was killed by the Romans and before he was betrayed by his own people. And What was so beautiful about that relationship with the disciples and Jesus is they lived life together, right? Everything they did, everywhere they went, every activity they took on, they did it together. And when Jesus left, right, it was one of the hardest things for the disciples. You know, he died and he rose again three days from the grave. And then he left and ascended into heaven. But he told them that a comforter would come and it would be the Holy Spirit. But they were so sad and they said that they were just looking up into the sky and they were thinking, because they had had this, such a strong relationship with, with Jesus right now. They had already gone through this tragedy of him dying and now he's back and they're getting to see him right before he leaves and then he's leaving again. And so they were just staring at the sky because, you know, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He said that he would return one day. So they're just looking in the sky, just hoping, is he going to come back soon? Like, when's he coming back? Or just in awe of that he's left, you know, and now the, not knowing what the next thing is. And then it said that like two angels appeared to them and was like, hey, why are you guys staring up at the sky? You're like, you got work to do. And that's kind of the thing, right? Like he's not, when we live our lives here on earth, you know, Jesus said that because we are in a relationship with him and because we, he has brought us back into relationship with God, that anything we go to him for, anything that we ask him for, that we pray to him for, he goes to the father, he goes to God about on our behalf. See, he's our, he is our advocate in heaven. And I don't know about you, but maybe you've had relationships with people and you've been mm -hmm. in situations where you were having to advocate for someone. And I don't think you're going to want to advocate. Unless it's your job and you're a lawyer, you're not going to want to advocate for someone that maybe you really truly don't believe in, you know, even as a client, right? It's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to stand up for someone you know is not a good person or someone that, you know, you don't really know well. And so you have to learn about them. You have to ask them questions. You have to better understand them. Or if it's your friend, right, you know them. But, you know, in order for us to go to him, like I said, I was kind of referencing that scripture earlier that I found in Isaiah, and I said I'll put it in the description because I don't have it right in front of me. Um, there was a scripture, right, where God was saying to Israel, like, you know, you, you, you come to me with your sins, and you come to me with these things, but... Basically, you don't love on me. And probably one of the biggest things that God's been on my heart is just love. One of the biggest things has been just loving on him, like telling him you love him. And, and, and then it kind of hit me when I was thinking about it, how Jesus would, was with the disciples and the relationship that they had, the time that they spent together every day eating together. You know, he ate with them. He, he walked with them. He took them places. He showed them things. And I think that's where we have to be led by the Spirit, right? That we are following the Spirit of God and doing the things that He wants us to do and accomplishing the things that He wants us to accomplish us and being led by the Spirit. When I say that, like, you know, whether we're at this grocery store getting food for our family and we see someone that's in need or maybe someone needs prayer or whatever it may be, see, we have to be led by the Spirit. And you may not understand that, and that's okay. 
but we have to involve God in it every day of our, every part of our lives, right? We can't just involve him in the things that we need help with. We can't just involve him in the things that, that, that we think are important because we don't want, you know, we want to make sure we have enough, whether we want to make sure we have enough money or we want to make sure we have everything taken care of. And those, yeah, it's important to us. You know, we lose our job or something happens to us. But see, if we walk with him every day, you know, every day, and one of the biggest things that I've been doing lately is just spending time with God. But even I, like this, again, I had this epiphany tonight and I've been coming home every night and reading the Bible for hours and praying and and it's really helped me. Like I'm getting closer and closer to God. But then I realized that I'm still not involving God in part of my life. Maybe there's little parts I'm not involving him. And I'm making changes and I'm trying to do what I can. But there's these little parts that I'm not involving God in. And I was like, God, what is that? So I started thinking about it. And I was like, if you're involving him in your daily life, every part of your life, every aspect, you know, then he, he knows everything about you. And he already does, right? God knows everything. He sees our hearts. He knows what we're going through. He knows everything that we're going through. He knows what we need. But we're blocking him. I mean, think about this for a minute. There's a lot of things in our life that we're not letting God into, right? Like, think about those areas. Maybe it's certain people you hang out with. Maybe it's certain places that you go. Maybe it's certain things that you do. And you're not letting God into that part of your life. And then why? Is it because there's something shameful? Is it because there's a... You feel like that's a sin and you just kind of want to pretend like God doesn't exist in that moment. Like again, he sees you at all points in your life. And see, and that's why sometimes when we're in that situation and we're, we're maybe we're deep in sin somewhere that it becomes so shameful that we don't even want to go back to God, right? Maybe we come to him when we really need something that we remember to call out his name. So the Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be people who cast out demons in his name. There'll be people that... They claim they knew him. But then when he'll look at them, he'll say, I never knew you. Because even though we know there's power in God's name, and even though we know that he exists, and even though we know there's a God, if we don't have a real relationship with him, he's not going to acknowledge us. The Bible says that if we don't acknowledge him here on earth, that he won't acknowledge us in heaven. That's, that's heavy, right? I mean, it's deep and it's heavy. And so I started thinking about, oh, this is what I'm missing. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm missing. Is that I've been involving God in my life, but I've not been taking him into every little instance of my life. And truly being led by the Spirit. I was writing some things down. I'm trying to see if I missed anything here. But that's where I kind of got it. was just, am I, am I putting God in every part of my life? Are you? Are you taking him into every part of your life from the moment you wake up? And I, like, you might think so, right? But then you get into an argument with someone, you get mad at them, you kind of have an attitude with someone at work or when you're out somewhere in traffic, right? Like, that never happens to me. <laughs> you know it does, right? I mean, we've talked about it before. And see, does that mean he wasn't with us? No, but it means that like in that moment, like were we truly being him or like if I was involving him in more of my life. And then I thought like, what are we, we worry so much about the future and about the things of the future and the plans of the future. But what if today is all we have? And the Bible tells us like, just worry about today because do what you can today, right? Like take the opportunities today. And like some of like, I was reading, I've been reading and, and talking to God and I was thinking like, God, like, I just want to get closer to you and I'm drawing closer to you and I, I want to just build something up. And then I just realized that it's all worth nothing because what am I doing? Like I wasted a whole day where maybe I could have influenced somebody or impacted somebody's life. And I didn't take that opportunity because I wasn't focusing on them. I was just focused on me, trying to make sure I was ready, trying to make sure I had everything prepared. And you're never going to have everything prepared and you're never going to have everything ready. But I can tell you this, if we actually are walking with God and including Jesus in our lives, just like the disciples did every day, then we're going to be ready when those situations come our way that we need to like tell them about Jesus or we need to do something kind for them. 
I need to be Jesus to other people. And, and then I thought, but is it because of the moments in our life that we don't include him? Those hidden moments, the moments nobody else can see, but you know what they are and I know what they are in my life. Is it because of those moments that we don't have a closer walk with him? Is it because of those moments that we've cut him out of huge chunks of our life? I know people that might just cut God out until Sunday or Wednesday night or the church service or when they go for, for Mother's Day. They cut God out for months and years. Doesn't mean they never knew him. Doesn't mean he didn't know them or doesn't know them. He created us. He created each of you for a purpose and a plan. But how much easier can our, our lives be and the closer we are to him? And how do we get there? And it's that daily relationship. And it's like, we got to give it all up. We can't hold on to these pieces of our lives because those pieces might be the pieces that keep us from entering heaven. It might be the pieces from us truly having a breakthrough in our lives. Maybe having a breakthrough if you've had addictions. Maybe having a breakthrough in your marriage. Maybe having a breakthrough in your job. Maybe having a breakthrough just in life in general. And the things that you want to see in life. What are we not including him in? And why? Why? We've got to think about that why. That why we don't include him in those things is really big. Maybe we never thought about it. Maybe we just thought it was just go to church on Sunday. Not a walk, a relationship. See, God doesn't want just a, God doesn't want to just see your face. He wants to see your heart. And the only way you can show him your heart is when you have a relationship with him. You know, what does he see when he's just getting snapshots of the heart? There's nothing we have to do to earn his love, to earn his love or to earn his mercy or grace. He's given it to us. We didn't ask for Jesus to be killed on the cross to save us. We didn't ask for that. He did it because he knew that we needed it. See, he knew us before we, we were born. He knew all the mistakes we would make. He knew you would be watching this video. But man, this hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, like why are we not including him in? And then are there things we need to remove from our life? Those things, the, whatever they are, do we just need to include them? Are there people we need to remove from our lives? Are there things we need to take out of our lives? Are there things we're doing that we know don't honor God and we're just trying to hide it. You can't hide it. And I get it. Let's try not to take breaks from God. Let's try to include him in every part of our lives. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let's start there. And then let's see if maybe there's things that, I mean, think about that. Are there friends that you have that you're, and this is where I kind of got with it, okay? I was like, wait a minute. Is there people in my life that maybe I wouldn't hang out with if I got to have Jesus there? And I started seeing it like that, right? In the spirit, like, you know, maybe you talk different when you're with this friend or you tell some different jokes when you're with this friend. And, you know, you really don't bring Jesus into it, right? Why? Because you know Jesus may not approve of that kind of situation, right? That relationship or that, or those things you're doing, or you're just not being who you really are in front of those people. And then I started thinking like, maybe there's other things in your life that you're, you're doing. You know, do you bring Jesus there? You know, I get it. And most of the time, what you probably find is the, the sins in your life are the areas and the, and the relationships that aren't, aren't good are the places where you haven't included God. And it's not because we never thought about it probably. It's probably because we're ashamed. And then think about that. What did I say earlier? The Bible tells us that if we're ashamed of God on earth, he'll be ashamed of us in heaven. And I'm not talking about maybe being ashamed, but we have shame because of the things we do. And then you got to ask yourself, do I really follow Jesus? Am I really following him? Have I really given my life to him? Have I given him every aspect? Have I put him so far first? Is he, is he truly at the like center of my life? Or am I just playing a game here? It hit me hard. I hope that it makes sense what I'm saying. 
like I said, I'll try to throw some scriptures down there, some of the things I talked about, because I want to make sure to provide that to you. If you're looking for where I talked about how Jesus followed the disciples, you can read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and they all, those are all great books to read. They're similar stories, but from different people's perspectives, and they all talk about how Jesus followed. Even if you just read one of them, Matthew, or pick John, or whichever one you want to watch, but you'll hear how they followed, how the disciples followed Jesus, and they gave up everything. A lot of them all lost their lives for Jesus in the future. Are we willing to give up our lives? So that's, that's tough, right? But we may have to. And uh, I think uh, we got to be willing to do everything we can to make sure others know about him. That's a... It's, it's a tough world out there. And I don't know how to make it without him in my life. And, I, and then when I think about what the future holds, you know, God's, God's shared a lot with us of what will come in the future and what we have to do to be right. And uh, if it was right now, I don't know. But uh, I think tomorrow is going to be another day for me to walk closer with him and, and begin to remove more of those things out of my life begin to find a closer walk with God and a closer friendship and uh, he's revealing so much to me and it's all about spending time with him and really truly involving him in every aspect of your life and I got a new plan tomorrow and I'll continue to share what I can as we go and as God shows me things but I hope this uh, I hope this message kind of opened your eyes to something different in your life and maybe to the relationship you want to have with Christ. And I want to say that if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you find yourself in hopeless situations where you're kind of worried about the future, I can tell you I have peace, you know, in my heart because I know that I've given my life to the Lord and it gives me peace. And I know that no matter what happens, if I was struck down tomorrow, that I will live in eternity with him. And if you can't say that for yourself or you just don't know him, but you need that kind of peace in your life. So Jesus told us he was the peacemaker. He said that when he was going, he was going to send a gift to us, peace. He sent us the Holy Spirit and it gives us peace. But if you don't know, I just want to say a quick prayer with you. In order to have salvation, all you have to do is to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that uh, accept him into your heart and that's literally what it is you know when you accept him in he's going to come into you and begin to make you into a new creation what does that mean like it means he begins it's like when his when you activate something in your life and in your heart when you do that when you accept christ you activate something inside of you that it begins to change you in in ways that you you'll notice you, you can't go certain places you can't do certain things you begin to have this conviction in your heart and you know that there's something different in you and it just starts with that, simply accepting that Christ was the Son of God. Now, many people have accepted him in their lives. There's thousands of Christians that, that believe in him. But keep in mind, maybe they're not really including him in their whole lives, right? But it's simply a relationship, no different than any other friendship that you've had. And just every day, you know, going to God and, and you know, saying today, Lord, use me however you want. I'm yours. And that may just be... Like I said, encouraging someone that you run into, telling people when you have the opportunity about Christ, that's up to you how much you want to give. But I want to give it all. And so I just want to say a prayer with you, simple as this. You just, you know, the Bible tells us if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we confess our sins to you right now, Lord. You know every dark secret in my heart, Lord God, anything I've ever said or done that is not acceptable in your sight. And Lord, I just ask you, God, if there are people out there right now who are needing peace in their lives and they're needing something different and maybe they've rejected church most of their lives, but they, they know that there is something that they need and they've seen some hope maybe in some friends or family members that, that have the Lord in their lives. And they're willing to just say, Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I messed up. I screwed up. And the Bible tells us that when we when we ask Him to forgive us and we say, confess that Jesus is Savior, we, we say, God, we know that Jesus is the Son of God. We want you just to forgive us our sins. 
says that, you know, he's going to remove it as far as the east is from the west. It's like hitting the delete key on the keyboard and everything that was ever bad that you ever did has been deleted now. And it's all forgiven. And you start anew. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Think about the weight and the shame and the, the guilt and all the things. Sometimes it takes a while just to forgive yourself. But God forgives you just like that. The moment you say that prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you will open their hearts, Lord God, open their minds, Lord God, and begin to speak to them in a mighty way, Lord God. Remove that veil. The Lord tells us there's a veil in our eyes until we come to know Christ. And once we do, we can see things in the Bible that we never saw before. We can hear things from the God that we never heard before, Lord. And I pray that you open their hearts, open their eyes, and open their minds and allow them to see the things you have planned for them, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. If there was even just one person, Lord, I know that it was worth just talking about this today. And I ask you to forgive them their sins, Lord. Watch over them and protect them. And if there's anybody who thought about it but didn't do it, Lord, I pray that you continue to work on their heart. For those of us who've already accepted Christ as our Savior, I pray that you will continue to be diligent in your walk with him. And I hope that this message helps you just a little bit. And I am praying for you. And I just want to say a prayer for everyone out there that's watching this video. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that if you are battling sin, if you are battling things in your life that you cannot get, you just seem like you can't get rid of, Lord. I pray right now against every spiritual bondage of the enemy that would be coming against you, whatever demonic entity might be causing this addiction, these things, whatever it is, Lord, whether it's sexual morality, whether it's addiction, whether it's anger, whatever it is, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, we come against every principality. We bind the strong man. We bind every spirit of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus under my voice and anyone that is there, whatever you've been going through, I pray right now that God will release release you of it in the name of Jesus. I command any demonic entity to leave, to leave you alone, to quit bothering you, to quit harming you, to quit trying to entice you into sin. In the name of Jesus, we break every curse over your life in the name of Jesus. If there's a family curse, if there's anything that's in your life that the devil has tried to hold over you in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it right now. I rebuke every spirit of the enemy. The Bible tells us that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven and we bind the principalities in the name of Jesus that have come all across. See, see, it's all demonic entities that try to lead us into sin and they try to pull us into sin and those things, we let them into our lives and they can oppress us and they can possess us and they can hold on to us. But when we rebuke them and you have to say it too, just say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Stay out of my life. You cannot harm me. I am a child of God. I am created in his image and I am and I am filled with his spirit in Jesus name. And when you do that, ever those things are going to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. They're going to be broken. No longer will you face those troubles. No longer will you fight those battles because God is now fighting them with you. And yeah, it's not easy all the time. And you may have things that you're going to be tempted back into. But I just tell you to keep saying that anytime you feel tempted, read the Bible, read the Bible. Just feed yourself on the word of God. When you feed yourself on the word of God daily, it will help you to overcome sin. I know because I've, I've been in those situations and I, I read the word of God and that word of God is just, it's just changing me and changing me and changing me. We got to get closer and closer to him. We can't go teeter tottering back and forth. We got to once and for all be free in the name of Jesus. And our God is powerful and he is able to break every bondage in your life. And I pray that God is blessing you today. And I pray that God goes with you. And I pray that we all walk a little bit closer with him and maybe open him up to a little bit more of our life today. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. More videos to come in the future. Also, I know that Kyle wants to make some videos. So this stuff is happening in our lives. I can't wait to tell you guys more about it, but I gotta go to bed. It's like eight in the morning. This is normal for me, right? I do you know, I went from being out looking at videos, something crazy, to uh, staying up praying that the demonic forces that are coming against us, our families, and our culture will no longer be able to do so. I pray that you'll do the same. I love you. Keep me in your prayers always, and I will continue to pray for you as well. In Jesus' name, if you have prayer requests, if you have anything you want to tell me, you can throw it down in the comments um, anytime or send me an email. I also have a new email, Walkers for Christ at gmail.com. Feel free to email me there or uh, hit me up on the one that I had before. Either way, I have both of them. So I love you guys. Appreciate you. Uh, also, we'll be having some videos on TikTok coming soon. Uh, Holy Walkers. Uh, for It's like the Holy Walkers at Holy Walkers for Christ uh, for TikTok. But uh, and it's linked on the YouTube page, I believe. So anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you soon. And God bless you. And may he keep you. And I love you guys.